In this video, <coughs> I'm going to go through the um, Edexcel AS Paper 1. Uh, and uh, this is the 2019 paper. I'm going to do the second half of this paper. I did the first half in an earlier video. Okay, so question nine, question about chlorine and its compounds. Uh, potassium chlorate 5 can be produced by passing chlorine gas into hot concentrated potassium hydroxide. This reaction is an example of, well, the answer is it is an example of disproportionation. In other words, one thing's simultaneously being oxidized and reduced. And that's because if you look at the oxidation number of chlorine there, it is zero elements and combined. The oxidation of chlorine and potassium chloride here, well, it's a, potassium, it's a chloride ion, so it's going to be minus one. Whereas in this one here, it's going to be a chlorate five ion. So the oxidation number there is plus five. So one of the, one of the chlorines has been oxidized up to plus five and the others have been reduced down to minus one. Okay, you've got a dot cross diagram for the chlorate five iron. Okay, predict the shape and the bond angle of the chlorate iron. Okay, so um, we've got, uh, of course, when we're looking at the shape of molecules, we treat double bonds just like single bonds. So what we've got essentially there is we've got four pairs of electrons. We've got three bonding pairs. And we've got one lone pair. So what shape is that going to be? Well, if you remember, the sort of classic molecule that has this shape is the ammonia molecule. So it's got three bonding pairs, three lone pairs. And the shape of that is called, we've got, it's, it's called uh, <coughs> pyramidal. Um, and these bond angles here uh, are uh, 107.5. That's 107.5, if you really draw the chlorate ion, but you know what I mean. Um, all of those bond angles are going to be 107. I should draw that. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that. My chlorine there, I'm going to draw a lone pair there. And we've got three bonding pairs. One double bond, another double bond, and then we've got the single to the to that one. Okay, all of the bond pairs. Sorry, the, the bond angle is going to be one hundred and seven point five. If it was four bonding pairs, it would of course be one hundred and nine point five degrees, but you get bigger repulsion between the lone pair and the bonding pair. Uh, and that makes the bond angle slightly smaller than 109.5, makes it about 107.5. Okay. The following reaction occurs when potassium chlorate 5 is heated at suitable temperature. Complete the equation by balancing it. Okay. Right. So we are just got to balance that equation. Now, how are you going to balance it? You could just do trial and error, um, or you could think about oxidation numbers. Um, so that chlorine there's got an oxidation number of plus seven. That one's got an oxidation number of minus one. And this one has got an oxy, ox, oxidation, sorry, that's plus five, not plus seven. It's plus seven. So that one has been oxidized by two. And that one has been reduced by um, four. Okay, so to balance that, I'm going to put a four there, and um, you're going to end up with three chlorates. If you just check the oxygens there, the oxygens are all uh, balanced. You've got uh, 12 oxygens on the left, 12 on the right. That is the balanced equation. Table shows some properties of potassium chloride and potassium chlorate. Seven, devise a brief method to show how the compounds produced in the decomposition could be effectively separated. Right, so you're producing that and that. Now, we can see there that there is, um, neither of them are very soluble at all in ethanol, right? you know, 10 to the minus six. Um, moles in 100 grams, that's a tiny amount, so that's not going to be too too good. Um, but they're reasonably soluble in water, and you can see here the potassium chloride is a lot more soluble 
than potassium chloride, right? It is approximately, you see that's 10 to the minus one, isn't it? And this is 10 to the minus two. So it's at least 10 times more soluble, more than that. But KCl is 10 times more soluble in water. So if you dissolve the potassium chloride in water, or if you dissolve the mixture, in water, you will get um, a solution which is mostly just potassium chloride. Hardly any of this will dissolve, so you can filter that off. Okay, then you'll be left with a solution, which is just mostly this, the potassium chloride, and then you can uh, evaporate the water to obtain crystals of potassium chloride based on the fact that they've got very different solubilities in water. This is a calculation involving PPM. Chlorine gas can be dissolved in swimming pools um, to disinfect it. Right, an Olympic swimming pool contains 2,500 meters cubed of water. The chlorine content is two parts per million, okay? Calculate number of moles of chlorine in the swimming pool. Well, it usually tells us here that look, one PPM is equivalent to one gram of chlorine in a million grams of water. Okay, so what we're going to say here then is we're going to say well, how many, uh, well, how many grams of how many uh, how many grams of water have we got? Okay, so one meter cubed of water of anything is equal to a million centimeters cubed. Uh, we know the density of water is one gram per centimeter. So one meter cubed contains 10 to the six grams of uh, water. Right, it says one ppm is equivalent to one gram in 10 to the six of water. So two ppm is equivalent to two grams. Okay, so two ppm is equivalent to um, two grams per 10 to the six grams of water, or two grams per meter cubed of water. The question tells us we've got 2,500 meters cubed of water in the swimming pool. So in 2,500 meters cubed, the mass of chlorine uh, is going to be the mass of chlorine is uh, two times two thousand five hundred meters. Two thousand the is that many grams? The mass of that many grams of chlorine, which is equal to five thousand grams. Okay, now we just need to work out the mass, the moles of that chlorine. Moles is equal to mass over mR. We've got uh, 5,000 grams. The MR of Cl2 is uh, 71, two times 35.5. Okay, and if you, sorry, 71. So if we work that out, then you should get, um, the answer is 70.4 moles. Okay, so, okay, so let's have a look at uh, the next question then. When chlorine gas is dissolved in water, it reacts according to the equation. Okay, we've got it there. Right, so the chloric acid produced here is much more effective as a disinfectant, much better than the chlorine. And because it's a weak acid, it doesn't have that much effect on the pH of the water. Okay, now it says use the equation, and that's important. You've got to do that to explain one disadvantage of chlorine content that is much lower. So let's do one disadvantage of the lower chlorine content. Low chlorine content, it means that this equilibrium here, 
uh, Lasciatelli tells us the equilibrium will be over to the left. So that means you're going to have a low concentration of the, the, the actual disinfectant, which is the chloric, hypochloric acid, HClO. So it's not very, not very good at disinfecting. That's the disadvantage there. What's the uh, disadvantage of the higher chlorine content? Well, with higher chlorine content, the equilibrium is going to be over to the right. Um, so that means you're going to have a high concentration of that, which is good. But unfortunately, you're going to have a high concentration of HCl. HCl isn't a weak acid like HClO. It's a strong acid. So that means you're going to have lower pH and might the pH may become too low. In many swimming pools, sodium chlorate has replaced chlorine gas as a disinfectant. Uh, sodium chlorate is an ionic compound, it's very soluble in water. Describe using diagrams to illustrate the, uh, the you, to illustrate your answer, the interactions between each of the ions and the solvent. Right, the solvent is water, and of course, water has a dipole, okay, because oxygen is a lot more electronegative. So you've got delta minus on there, delta plus on the hydrogens. Uh, now, if you've got a sodium ion here, sodium ion is positive, so it's going to attract that end of the water molecules towards it. Yeah. Okay, so that is going to be uh, how, the, how the, the interaction between the sodium ion and the water. The, uh, the chlorate ion, well, the interaction there is going to be, right, so in that case, the, you're going to get the water molecules are going to be attracted that way around. The delta positive hydrogen is going to interact with the negative end of the chlorate ion. So that's how that's going to work. Okay, displayed formula of ethanol and chloroethane is shown below. <clears throat> ethanol is very soluble in water, whereas chloroethane is almost insoluble. Explain this by comparing the types of intermolecular forces. Right, now the reason why ethanol, of course, is soluble is because water uh, can form hydrogen bonds. Um, and ethanol can also form hydrogen bonds, so it can form hydrogen bonds with the water. Um, and... Um, interact with the water molecule 22 marks i don't think you have to actually draw a diagram showing the interaction of of the molecules uh, of the hydrogen bonds just enough to state it when it's chloroethane you're not going to get any hydrogen bonds and the main intermolecular force you're going to get there are probably going to be uh, london forces okay and of course london forces are not terribly significant in water because you've got these much stronger hydrogen bonds so the water molecules can't really interact with the chloroethane molecule um, it's not soluble. Okay. Now here's the last question, quite a short video. Calcium chlorate can be used to disinfect drinking water. Um, the concentration of calcium chlorate um, required to disinfect, disinfect water is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per decimeter cubed. Calculate the mass that should be added to 1,000 dm cubed of water. <clears throat> To produce this concentration. So what we're going to do first of all is work up the moles of, of chlorate ions that we're going to need. Um, actually, okay, the, so the moles of chlorate ion have to be a little bit careful here because one mole of, of calcium chlorate gives, of course, gives two moles of chlorate ions, okay? So the moles of chlorate ions we're going to need are going to be concentration times volume. Uh, the concentration required is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 6 moles per decimeter cubed. The volume is 1,000. So that's going to give us 5.6 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of chlorate ions. And then we have to remember one mole of calcium chlorate gives two moles 
of the chlorate ions in solution. So the concentration, um, so the, uh, the, the, the concentration of calcium chloride required then is going to be, where the moles of calcium chloride required, going to be this number divided by two, which is um, 2.8 times 10 to the minus three moles. And then finally, we need to work out the mass of calcium chlorate. Okay, so mass is equal to uh, moles multiplied by the MR. The moles we've got is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. And the MR of calcium chlorate, if you work it out, is 143.1. So we do that. Gives us an answer of point to three significant figures. It gives 0 0.400 grams. That's how much we would need. That's the last question on the paper. So that's the end of the video.